Hey, 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 everybody. Good noon, morning, or afternoon, as appropriate. How y'all doing today? Good to see a microchip. Do not put me on pizza, Jedi Monkey. On a wob, ended up with a 45 months. Closing in on four full years. Holy moly. Such a pleasure to still have you with us. One of the OGs of the channel. How's it going, Martin? Scores easy. The Bram Hammer. Dwarven Heart. Lith. Captain Caps, thanks for 37 months. In terms of new games coming up on the channel, we have Floppy Nights. Uh, Going to be showcased sometime this week. We checked out the demo of Floppy Nights a couple of times during its development period. Uh, and I'm excited for the full release of that game, which is out today on Steam. For those who are interested in a, uh, a cutesy little strategy slash deck builder featuring one of the artists from Dicey Dungeons. It seems like it's going to be a delightful little charming experience. So I'm looking forward to exploring that. Good morning, Schmail. Grats on that first Watcher heart kill. The round sweep. How's it going, Ravenock? <laughs> Hello as well to Chunt, Mr. Baconudo. Levy, Zerikar, and everybody else who's lurking around. Hello, hello, everybody. Let me just... Perfect. Hello and welcome to Spooky Tooth as well. Grats on beating Silent A20. Glad the content helped you get there. Definitely the most uh, challenging character on Ascension 20, I think, is the Silence. Perfect segue into our uh, Silent Run today. Currently have a, a full, full round sweep with everybody. So if we can get a successful Silent win here, we actually have a bit of a streak. How exciting. Silent A20 is definitely a tough time. That's for sure. Lovey says, what... Ascension level is hardest to overcome. I think the, the biggest challenge spike, personally, is Ascension 10. Getting that Ascender's Bane curse is the, the real separation in difficulty between easier Spire and harder Spire, at least for me. Consistently having one less draw per combat can lead to unpleasant outcomes all sorts of places from... Uh, having a disaster turn against a boss to just taking chip damage every now and then in hallway combats. I'm consistently able to point out situations where just in one fight of one run, the Ascender's Bane curse is costing me 10 or more hit points. Definitely some other really big challenging ones. The other exceedingly difficult... Um, Threshold to get past is Ascension 17, 18, and 19, the, the last three enemy modifier Ascensions that change the, the move sets and stat buffs a little bit. Time for a Ninja Silent. I hope so. I hope so. Got shivs on the brain, that's for sure. Four hit birds are brutal. Shelled Parasite attacking for 21 on turn 1 every time is extra brutal. 
We, we talk all the time about that dang avocado, and it's, it's because of the Ascension 17 change that the avocado is truly scary. Chosen hexing a turn earlier makes them much more of a threat in many situations. Just to name a few of the, the many very challenging changes. Um, in Act 1, the, the behavior changes to slime enemies. They attack more frequently. Slime Boss, therefore, becomes much more of a challenge on Ascension 17. Speaking of, please no Slime Boss. Dang it. All right, well, we're fighting Slime Boss. So that means we need a way to beat the Slime Boss. As Silent, that can be rather difficult to come by. As area damage cards on this character are a little lacking, and, and her starting damage overall is a bit lacking. Hmm. To further complicate factors, we have a maximum of two elites to fight. Option A, take a bunch of combats. Upgrade elite, upgrade again, fight another elite. And then prep for slime boss with a bunch of events or something? I don't know. This may be more combats, replenish potions. I actually wouldn't mind just looking at a whole ton of cards in Act 1 to prepare for Slime Boss. There is, yes, a snipe option available. Let's mark that in white. Because there is a Niao's Lament, right? Enemies in your next three combats have one health. Look at this. Shop, event. We could even go double shop to really almost guarantee that this is a one hit point elite. No way to make this one one hit point. Problem is, we get no rest sites doing that. There's no way to make it two elites either. I don't think that's a very good path. Even if we did incorporate a third event and still got there, I, I don't think this is very good. 155. You're right. Good catch. Double snipe is possible? No. Because you've always got the first combat is here. So in order to get a double snipe, you have to have no other guaranteed combats. And there's one here and here. Can't get to the second elite. Can't snipe up this way either. Yeah, no, I don't think we're going to bother with Niav's Lament here. I'm much more leaning towards uh, lose all of our money to get a rare colorless card. Especially since a uh, rare colorless card can help a lot against Slime Boss. This could be a, a bomb start, for example. Have I ever been able to snipe the Act 1 boss? I have not had it happen in one of my own random runs. No. Although I can't say that I've really been trying that hard to make it happen. Starting with Apotheosis can also be really good. Let me just look at the other path that I thought was vaguely decent here. Something like this. I can take two combats here. Then get a later rest site. I think that's just the same distribution as this way, except you get this rest site way earlier. Either way, I'm thinking I'm going to go with uh, Luz Al Gold, choose a rare colorless card. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, well, well. What have we here? Thinking Ahead is not much of a useful card, not at the uh, start of the game. I mean, it, it's fine. You draw two, then put one on top. It's like an upgraded Warcry, which is, again, fine, but not super fine. Transmutation is interesting for generating random colorless cards. There's a lot of good things that that can, that can do, actually. And then there's Panache. Every time we play five cards in one turn, deal 10 damage to all enemies. Panache is a zero-cost power, which is super useful. But it's only useful if you can play five cards on your turn. By default, the Silent cannot do that with her starter deck. It's certainly possible that we could incorporate... Uh, Silent in particular is very good at making Panache activate. Just one blade dance is all it really takes to make the Panache work. But at the start of the run, it cannot activate. So it is at the very minimum a curse to begin the run with. 
That's a bit awkward. I think I'm personally more inclined to take, believe it or not, Transmutation here. Give this card a try. One of my favorite colorless cards. It's been a long time since it's been featured on a run. As an X-Cost card, it gets better with more energy sunk into it. Transmutation can do some very interesting things. Uh, it can generate free copies of Apotheosis, free bombs, Hands of Greeds. But just in general, creating a whole bunch of colorless cards can surprisingly often bail you out of a situation. Wicked Agent says, is Watcher the only one who could five card with just the starter deck? Technically, the defect can if you are counting upgrades on starter cards. You can play upgraded zap, upgraded dual cast, and three basics. But that would require, again, two upgrades. Let's give this a try. I don't actually know if it's going to work. I do, in particular, like the upgrade to Transmutation. The upgraded version makes the created cards upgraded themselves. Now, sometimes it's best just to not play the Transmutation. We're going to go up, uh, up this path, by the way. Sometimes it's best just to not play the cards. Dang it. Uh, let's do it this way. Stinky 14 hit point slime. Perfect. Here we go. Give me two cards. What are they going to be? Mind Blast and Master of Strategy and Behold... They work together in the combo. If I reshuffle the draw pile, Mind Blast does eight entire damage. Brilliant. Okay, maybe not the strongest showing in the world, but it doesn't matter. The card did what we needed it to do, which is literally something on that turn. Allowing us to clear this combat with only one damage taken. That's pretty good. We get a potion and we get a dash, which I will happily take this early on. Two cost, gain 10 block, deal 10 damage. Easy peasy early silent pick. This is one of the best floor one cards for silent. Why? It's just a very compact card. It, it has a lot of numeric output for the low price of, relatively low price of two energy. And it only takes up one card. So it's very reliable. It's also an attack, which means it won't make Kremlin Hob angry, even though you're able to block with it, which is a, a real premium here in Act 1. The exact number of 10 block is very useful against the Sentries Elite of Act 1. Works pretty dang well against Lagavulin, too. So it's just a really, really good card in Act 1, both because of the type of card it is and the way that the precise numbers on it uh, line up against the enemies in this act, and because... It's just overall very efficient. All right, do I spend three energy to deal 16 or do I rely on transmutation here to maybe make a little bit more happen? Probably correct to just deal the damage. We'll pretty cleanly beat this fight. Could have a better outcome by playing it though. I don't think there's a reason to. Let's, let's not. Let's take the, this is a fight where Whiffing the damage on turn one can be pretty bad, so let's just do our guaranteed hit of damage. Let's see where we go. No need to unnecessarily involve the RNG. Three strikes next turn? That'd be really nice. So close. We go dash survivor and then kill next turn. Perfect. All right, yeah, that was definitely the right way to play that fight. Ooh, I like a flying knee here. Cloak and Dagger would have been the pick if we had taken Panache. That'd be the first card we've seen that lets us activate the Panache. But I really like flying knee. It's a bit more damage, and one additional energy on next turn is both useful for getting dash played, but also for making amusing transmutation turns. And I think will also help us against the slime boss and just playing slimed or something. We don't have any poison to go with the Bane. Don't have a whole lot of use for the Cloak and Dagger. And I'll lose some max health to gain the Golden Idol. Usually like to do this early in a run. Golden Idol gives us more money over the course of the whole run. Although the loss of maximum HP is a little 
annoying. It's slightly annoying now. And agreed. Almost. I had to try it. Hey, and a first area damage card offered to us. Dagger Spray. Pretty easy pick up here. Could also go with a Masterful Stab. Zero cost, deal 12. Gets more expensive as we take damage. Masterful Stab can be a really, really nice early game damage card for the Silent. Because it is very, very effective. Zero cost, deal 12. Early on, when your deck is still small, because of the Ring of the Snake, you're very likely to draw this card on turn one or be able to full block on turn one, and then you draw it on turn two and play it for, for free. Deadly Poison is normally not a bad damage card either for Silent, but I usually tend to avoid poison cards when I'm facing the Slime Boss in Act 1. That's because the Slime Boss makes the poison a lot less effective by splitting in half every time they reach half health and uh, removing all poison when that occurs. I'm going to give the Masterful Stab a try over the Dagger Spray. Because we have the dash, we're able to stay at full health pretty consistently. And because I have the Transmutation, I do have a greater desire for a free card. And look at that, instantly doing the thing that I said it would do, which is be drawn as free damage on turn one. It's good stuff. me. All right, so far we're kind of very cleanly going through the act. Backflip, Dagger Sprite, Quick Slash. This does feel like a deck that might enjoy a backflip. I feel like backflip's a card I'm under picking early. Or we can grab this Dagger Spray. That way you have Dagger Spray and Masterful Stab. Let's actually do that. I do like backflip early on a little bit more than I think I have in the past, but... If I grab Dagger Spray here, then that becomes probably my best upgrade. We can make that uh, six to all enemies twice, and that'll be exceedingly useful for here. I think this has been a really good start so far. Backflip's also nice with the Flying Knee. But let's pick Dagger Spray, let's upgrade Dagger Spray. And we'll figure out the rest from here. Our first Elite is going to be Gremlin Knob with 89 health. Hello, Gremlin Knob. I see we drew dash on turn one. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Probably just dash, flying knee, play the transmutation. And then we're going to need to figure stuff out from there. We may end up using liquid memories on the dash. Hollywood, thanks for two full years of support. Actually, it might be flying knee transmutation. That's the other option. Instead of dealing 10 damage with dash, we... Get two new cards for free from the colorless pool. That could pay off massively, or it could be a waste, and we miss out on 10 damage against Gremlin Knob. And Olivia 5k, thanks for four months of support. Good luck. Gonna be required on any run involving transmutation. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna play this transmutation for two. Show me what you got. Flash of Steel and... Transmutation. Oh, okay, that worked out adequately. We'll be back. And I have four energy on this turn. Three strikes next turn, so I know exactly what I'm drawing, and it's not very good. There's no way that I do 45 damage. Obviously. I think next turn I Liquid Memories the dash. Play dash and three strikes. Deal a bunch and then the following turn. I don't know. Gambler's Brew gets involved. But yeah, I think it's Liquid Memories dash next turn. And then we might still have to take another hit from there, which is a little ugly. 
Don't want a Gambler's Brood here. Nor do I want to play the defense. Give me the dash. And then we can hopefully do 17 with the next draw. With Gambler's Brew, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, with Gambler's Brew. Keep the one strike. Yeah. There we go. Okay, not too, too bad, considering the potions. Uh, and considering that we don't have to fight another Gremlin Knob now, we get a Strike Dummy, a very, very good relic for the early game. All of our strikes now deal three more damage, which means our damage output in this deck is now great. For the early game, at least. If we could find a Terror, it'd be excellent. These are not Terror, though, nor are they any usefully defensive cards. I could maybe take a Dagger Throw, maybe take an Acrobatics, but neither feel particularly great at the moment. I'm going to skip it all. We have enough added damage cards at this point. I usually think about five added damage cards is correct in Act 1. We've got four, but also now our strikes are better, and I think that should be just fine. I do think that we performed well enough in that fight that I get to upgrade another card here. And I'm going to take this opportunity to upgrade my personal favorite. We're going to upgrade Transmutation so that it creates upgraded colorless cards. Do I go for the Burning Elite? Could definitely do this. Grab our green key here. It's basically the same path either way. From here, right? And I know this is not a Gremlin Knob. I think I'll perform pretty well against a Legavulin. So I can play the Transmutation. But I don't have any potions. Which is a little spooky. I'm going to give it a try. I think we'll do okay here. Especially with a Pen Nib. Every 10th attack we play is now doubled in damage. It is an additionally metallicizing Lagavulin. And look at that. We got a Chrysalis Plus. Shuffle five random skills into the draw pile that now cost zero. What does this do? We got a Malaise. A lot of stuff that doesn't actually normally cost stuff. Look and Dagger, though. And let's put this and this on the bottom. Just stepping our pen up here. Ah, dang it. Just hoping I dropped the malaise here. Shoot. Really didn't work out, unfortunately. All right, well, let's malaise for three, and then calculated gamble with the tactician to play. Do I transmutation for one, or do I just defend? What's transmutation here? That's correct. The bomb plus. There we go. That's what we needed. Here, Uncut Maple Syrup, thanks for 12 months of support. Good to have you friends. What Mattel is the problem, though. Cool, that actually went reasonably well, thanks to Transmutation. Entirely thanks to Transmutation, in fact. Now we have a boat thingy. Now we have the Emerald Key. And do I take a second Flying Knee in this deck? I would strongly consider it, actually. Yeah, this feels like a double Flying Knee sort of deck. Thanks to that X cost card. Give it a try. Greetings, Slime. Half health for you is 34. Of course, the flying knees actually do less damage than our strikes do. That's a little bit awkward. Don't worry about that part. Spanash is back. The power. It's 
Storm of Steel. Another copy of Dash. Double Dash? Not sure. Definitely not sure. Does feel very useful, broadly. i do it. Double dash, double knee. And now for the matching keep. There's six pairs of cards on a Ascension 20 that's two pairs of curses, which can all be the same curse. So you can have four of the same curse here. Two starter cards, two common cards, two uncommon cards, and two rare cards. So here's our common, the Cloak and Dagger, and one of the four curses, Parasite. Flechettes is the uncommon? I guess I wouldn't hate Flechettes. There's the other Cloak and Dagger. I don't want a Cloak and Dagger. Phantasmal Killer is the rare. Can we find the other Phantasmal? Yes. Next turn, our attacks deal double damage. You got it, buddy. I like it. Uh, I like it. And a leg sweep? Is this too many cards? I don't think so. I think Slime Boss wants us to have a lot of cards added. That is why we took uh, a route with so many combats. Partially to accumulate potions, par partially to accumulate just lots of cards. Uh, already at 20 plus cards. And that means that the slime that uh, the Slime Boss adds to our deck will be less impactful overall. Kind of just a good cards deck, you could call it. We've added many high cost cards, many just overall efficient cards. And that's a good thing, I think. Okay, we got another potion. We do have two potions, although I wouldn't call them great. Another blade dance, a riddle with holes, or a dagger spray. Sure, we could add another dagger spray or the blade dance. Both feel a little extraneous here. How's it going, Vampirix? Welcome, welcome. Have a seat. Make yourself cozy and enjoy the... the run. Biddle with strikes. I like it. Blade Dance does feel feed the pen nib. Works nicely with the Phantasmal. There's there's some options to it. I don't think I need it though. But I sp skip a PK upgrade in case of Sneko. Great question. Better question. Do I need to rest to fight Slime Boss? And I think the answer is yes, we do. I don't feel like we're guaranteed to be able to split Slime Boss before turn three if the order is not correct on the draws. If we whiff the Phantasmal, for example. There's a couple ways to do that. Either we could draw Phantasmal turn one and then no attack cards on the second turn, or we could just draw a Phantasmal on the bottom of the deck. It's Phantasmal, attack cards, really damage plan for this deck. Well, with Strike Dummy and Pen Nib, it's, it's definitely something that we're incentivized towards. It's going to have to work at least for Slime Boss and for Early Act 2, depending on what we continue to find. That may or may not be something that scales well into the later game. I'm going to skip, and I think I'm going to rest. As much as I'd love to be able to get an upgrade here. Um, 22 health does not survive getting crushed by the slime boss. It also really doesn't survive for long after the slime boss splits in two. Thoroughly mediocre turn one. Remember, the strikes do more than the flying knee, so better to pen a strike there. I think I'm just going to transmutation for three here and see what happens. This is a instance of phantasmal killer whiffing. For sure. Keep the energy going, though. Discovery plus, Deep Breath plus, Finesse plus. A free after image. Okay. So Transmutation gave us an after image. That's pretty good. Do I want to reshuffle the draw pile? 
puts the slimes back in. I don't think I want to play this deep breath right now. Slime Crush. Oof, that's definitely not the draw we wanted on the Slime Crush turn. This is exactly why we rested. This kind of draw. Good news is we'll have a pretty good split next turn, I think. 83 minus 9. Oh, that does actually prevent the hit. It's just really crappy. Alright. Uh, I think I'd rather have my hit points. So, I'll interrupt you. 74. Oof. The yikes. Please don't weaken me. Let it Jesus, thank you so much for six months of support. Pen nib dagger spray, come on, one time. Yes! Get him. I think better to just take this hit. Use the phantasmal here, help finish the fight. Do I use the weak potion on you? I think I'm going to. Save a few hit points there, maybe more. Hmm. Could deal 31, bring this to 19. Seventy-four divided by two is thirty-seven. So thirteen would exactly split it, huh? Okay. Hopefully this is correct. Eighteen can't kill this one, but I can easily do this. way. Glass knife, get him. Perfect. GG, slime boss. GG. We survived. Wasn't even that close, thankfully. Good. Really good fight. Ooh, we get exciting options. Option A, bullet time. Prevents us from drawing additional cards this turn, reducing the cost of all cards in our hand to zero. Nice way to kind of empty your hand of cards is bullet time. That's nice with lots of high cost cards like Dash, Lake Soup, etc. Wraith form is pretty powerful. Giving us two intangibility or upgraded three. Cost is one dexterity per turn. I think Wraith Form is best in decks that don't have a very good block plan. This allows you to essentially buy yourself time. Or Doppelganger, another X cost card. Double says on your next turn, draw X additional cards and gain X additional energy. That's kind of interesting here. Works rather well with Flying Knees, kind of allowing us to turn carryover energy into bonus draw. It lets us further fuel transmutation turns sometimes. It's another X cost card. If we can find Chemical X, that'd be really, really hype. I oddly like it here. I think that the, the surplus of energy we're already able to create sometimes, and the larger hand size that the Doppelganger allows us to create, particularly if we upgrade the Doppelganger, is going to allow for some really powerful stuff. Is it necessarily the best option here? I, I don't know. Probably Wraithform is, is a reliably good pick. Uh, although I think because we have some really good two cost blocks, the leg sweep and two dashes, there's less need for a Wraithform than usual. We also have Anchor, which helps a bit too. I'm gonna give this Doppelganger a try. Go with the X cost line here. Have our energy generating flying knees and our energy spenders work in conjunction. It's going to be a little awkward unless we can find retain or I'm not sure. I think right now we want more energy base. Oh, we do get Sneko Eye. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Well, I think I'll take that. That seems like an easy pick right now. 
with uh, Double Dash, Leg Sweep. We didn't upgrade the Phantasmal Killer. And the X cost cards ignore the Sneko Confusion, so this is a particularly good Sneko Eye. At the start of our turn, draw two extra cards, but start each combat confused. All of our cards are randomly either there is zero, one, two, or three cost. Other options include Runic Dome, prevent us from seeing enemy intents to gain one more energy per turn. That wouldn't be bad. I think one more energy per turn would do well here. Um, or the Tiny House, giving us a small bunch of bonuses, notably 63 gold with the Golden Idol, but also replenishing our potion, increasing this low max health, and giving a random upgrade could be good too. It's actually a decent Tiny House, but I think the Sneko Eye is going to be very hilarious in the long term here. Fight a lot of elites this act. Am I actually capable, though? That's the question. Not if we don't go to a shop first. Hmm. Awkward, because I, I really like this path. Although I'd have to get past... This is maybe a little suicidal, actually. But if you could survive it, oh man, it would be so good. I don't, I don't think we do get to survive that, is the problem. I think we have to go to a shop... First, and if we go to one of these two shops, the problem is that we can't fight elites and also do anything else, really. I guess there is this line. But it, it's not as good. There's no way to get the fire and shop early and then later fight elites, is the problem. Oh, actually, we can, we can get to this elite from here. That's not too bad. Maybe I'll do that. I think we definitely want to start over on the left side. Starting right seems too committed. We have to fight two elites guaranteed if I do that. Let's not do that. Brilliant. Okay, Pendib the Dash. What, survivor transmutation? I think so. Good instincts. Yeah, let's draw through those. Perfect. Well, this is going effectively. Well, it was, anyway. Dang you, Sneko! All I had to do was be able to play two attacks. Curses. Zeknar! Hello and welcome. Thanks for that raid. If you haven't seen Zeknar's Slay the Spire streams, you absolutely should. Zeknar is one of the best silent players out there. Offers through thoughtful, analytical play and just some incredible runs overall. Highly recommend. Catching us on the midst of a silent run right now with his dreadfully awkward hand against the Spheric Guardian. Just one energy shy of this having gone really well for us. Unfortunately, it looks like my best line is dash, defend. I might want to use the speed potion for... It's only going to be plus six health uh, because we are frail here, but that's still pretty decent. I think that's the line I'm going to take. How rude. There's a backflip. I should probably grab one piercing well now that we're in Act 2, though. Reducing the strength of all enemies for one turn is such a helpful effect against, well, so many different foes for so many different reasons. Such as these nerds. I unfortunately cannot knock even a single bird out of the air because we rolled too high cost on everything. So I think what I'm going to do is neutralize and then transmutation and see what happens.
Dramatic entrance and a secret technique. Get a card, a skill from the draw pile at its current cost. Can also shuffle the deck first. What does that actually get me? Not sure. Let me defend, just so I'm more likely to draw Piercing Whale next turn. Thanks. Of course, now I don't need it. It's fine, too. Want to hit the one with the buff strength, I imagine. I could play PK here. That might be wise, considering. The draw next turn. The Doom. That's definitely not what I wanted to see. Oh well. Can't kill two of them, unfortunately. Ouch. Fifteen? That's quite a record. Fifteen in a row on silent. Holy moly, is that going Absurd. Lucky if I can get one in a row. Concentrate, prepared, not very good cards with the Snekoi, randomizing their cost. I think we're looking for something a bit more high impact here. Please to the shop now. Thank you. We're not offered a Chemical X, but we are offered another Doppelganger. We're also offered the Mummified Hand, making something free whenever we play a power card. Current problem, no power cards in this deck. Card removal looking pretty reasonable. Potions looking pretty reasonable. Hmm. I might buy the strawberry. I guess I could also buy cauldron, look at some better potions. That's kind of odd. Those are all streamed records, that's right. That's right. On sale acrobatics worth thinking about. With Snekawai, yes, I think it is worth thinking about. Because card draw is very helpful with Snekawai. So let's start with a card remove. Strikes are decent. Neutralize might want to go now. Considering it does so little damage. Let's do that. Let's remove Neutralize, our zero coster. Gonna add acrobatics. Am I gonna buy the strawberry? I think I am. I think I need a little bit more health here. Probably gonna rest this act anyway. And I'll take the colorless potion. Giving me a, a boost of some sort, although it's a bit of an unreliable boost. That'll have to be fine. These three nerds could definitely be an obstacle for us. Unless I draw a dagger throw a dagger spray next turn and it's free. Oh. Well, that was nice. Ask and ye shall receive, apparently. Could kill another one, take six here. I would rather leg sweep, though.
What do you got? That's so close to a playable grand finale. Alright, that went well. Why pay for an acro when you can have one for free? Do I take a second one? I guess I'll give it a try. Don't know if that's going to be useful. Kill 13 is nice, but being able to look at 20 cards and choose the highest cost one is great for Sneko decks. So I think basically no matter what we see here, we'll be able to find something really good like Predator, there's Terror, Alchemize. These are excellent cards. Well, he plans is pretty good too, letting us retain stuff. So I think we have a few very good considerations. Act boss is Bronze Automaton. That makes the terror a little bit less good. There's a Predator and a Crippling Cloud if we're looking for just higher cost stuff, but it's really about the impact of the card. And to that effect, I'd say terror is more impactful than Crippling Cloud, considering the deck. Do you like the bonus draw of Predator? Quite a lot. Okay, I'll take a Predator. I like all of those cards for different reasons. We're not going to opt into this elite. I'm probably going to go uh, this way. Move another card here. Fight this elite. But maybe we could try this. Seems a little scary. Yeah, Terror with Phantasmal Killer, with Pen Nib, the, the more you can multiply, the more effective it all becomes. I want to upgrade both the Doppelganger and the Predator. I'm going to start with the Doppelganger. Make that X plus one, so we can always play it for some benefit. And we find a Cursed Tome, riddled with cryptic writings. I'm in. Yeah, I was planning on maybe resting anyway. So this is further reason. Trade some health, fight these, rest, fight one elite. There are three different books we can get from this tome. The one we want is the Necronomicon. The first attack each Played each turn, costing two or more. And with Snekoi, that's the, the real cost of the card, whatever that might be. If that's two or more, then well, heck. There's going to be some devastation. I'm already drawing ten, so let's just do what damage we can here. So, for example, this dash costs two. So, if I play it as the first two-cost attack... It gets played twice. Double dash. That's a play in Mario Kart. Easy. One more whale sounds alright. Would Nilri's Codex have been good? Yeah, I think it would have been okay. Ooh, more max health. Yeah. Where's the mango at? Sneko versus Sneko. Who wins? It's gonna be Sneko. That's who. do anything. Didn't work. Now it does something, though. Cool. Choke with Necronomicon is surprisingly uh, funny. A little weird with Sneko, but not bad, actually. 
Good way to remove artifact layers, too. It's okay. Wouldn't call it great, but it's it's okay. We need more ways to deal damage. Let's give it a try. I do think I want to rest here for more health. Up to 51. Shop says funnels here. Now we can buy terror or well-laid plans as well. I think I'd rather have a terror. It's two cost, Twitch chat. That means it works with Necronomicon. Let's see. 12 times. 12 plus 18 plus 18. E6, 48. I can kill the front one, but not the back one here. Forge would upgrade the terror and the flying knee. Yeah, Forge would let me up would let me kill the back line, which would be very nice. Maybe means I could even play Defend. It's either Forge or the Colorless Potion, I think, here. If only Pennib were ready. Can you imagine? Yeah, let's do it this way. Easy. And then we'll go Defend, Doppelganger. Five energy next turn. Take two. Toxic Egg means any skills we add from here on out are upgraded. Also, Riddle with Holes is upgraded. I, I guess. But if I want that. I don't know that I do. Concentrate Plus is also interesting. Half the time it doesn't even generate energy because of the Sneko cost is the problem, so I don't think I want a Concentrate Plus. But I could, I could see it being interesting with the X cost cards. Rather have an outmaneuver. Plus, I think. Let's uh, let's skip all this. That elite fight went very well, by the way. I think we're going to be in really good shape moving forward here. Double flying knee. Like a block or whatever? Blah. Choke defend predator? Yeah. Oh, I did that wrong too. Well, heck. Thought I had Phantasmal Killer active, not Pendib. That was obviously wrong. Crap. I'll rest a second time. Does the clockwork souvenir stop the confusion from the Sneko Eye? It does not, no. No, it does not. Yes. Triple Zebra Bakery, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. An attic attack. 
Welcome as well. Thanks for that prime sub. This crippling cloud it says plus on it. Yeah. Seems fine. Seven poison and two weak to all enemies. It's a lot of debuffs. Honestly, I don't see why not, considering that we're a Sneko Deco. Let's just have another snooze. Keep make sure that we have enough health to survive Hyper Beam. Although we probably could have gotten away with an upgrade. I don't feel motivated to try at the moment. I'm gonna double dash. Let's just Dloppelganger. Seven energy on this turn, please. Perfection. This is free, this is free, this is free. Who are we hitting here? I think we want to pick off the minions. On some level here, at least. Go for this one first. Okay, double dagger spray. Transmutation for two. Double free malaise. Yeah, so for example, we can't even generate energy with the concentrate here. Sad time. Get him. Hyperbeam's next turn, so accumulating block seems reasonable. And bonus card draw. Double the dash. Yeah, why not? Makes for a nice, comfortable block. Still, thanks for 21 months of support. Many moons. Slow that bad boy down a little bit. to win soonish. Be nice. We could do that. Let's cut that. Definitely want to block with leg sweep. Leg sweep piercing well. Yeah, then we can play Phantasmal. Take one more, and we should be able to win before we get attacked again, which will be the next Hyper Beam, so we've really, really got to hurry this up. The Double Chokening, let's go. Followed by playing Block Cards. Easy game. GG. Definitely not the cleanest smoothest fight, but not bad, not bad at all. What do you call a chat member who's rocking a sweet haircut? Silvar Dew. How are you doing today in chat?
Could take another X caused card here. Malaise. Let's us sap strength off enemies. A permanent strength reduction is very, very powerful. There is also, as noted, bullet time here, allowing us to make everything in our hand free, which can also be really nice. I think both of these are pretty good candidates for the deck at the moment. The upgrade is helpful on the malaise, not so much on the bullet time. I think I want to try the bullet time. Especially if we end up in a deck without uh, four base energy, that will be really helpful. I'll keep the current potions. And... Hmm. Sozu Astrolabe Hovering Kite. Might be a Sozu. I guess we could go Hovering Kite with double acrobatics. Wouldn't call us particularly good at it, though. Transforming and upgrading three cards with the Astrolabe is nice, but with 32 cards in the deck, I feel like it's going to be fairly low impact overall, especially since we're a Sneko Deco. That said, there's certainly good cards we could get from it that would change things hugely in our favor. I don't think this is a very good Sozu. I think it could be okay. If we want to take the Ancient Potion to the heart, then Sozu would be fine. Begrudgingly take Sozu? I think that's where I'm headed here, is begrudging Sozu. Based on how broadly useful energy is for us. That's what I'm going to do. The begrudging Sozu take. Already gotten our key. We'd like to maybe remove one card at a shop this act. I think two elites is very reasonable then. Something like this. What are we doing against Reptomancer? We're okay against Repto. Not great, but okay. There's no path that hits a shop that also goes to... This actually goes to two shops. Could avoid that first one. There's no path that hits a shop that also gets three elites, is what I'm trying to say. So, we'll go here. Banker boy. I don't think I want the bullet time because it would prevent the Necronomicon from working. I guess strike strike is the same as double striking or whatever. I have a spiker solution. I suppose that I do. There's that outmaneuver plus I said I wanted. I'm gonna take it. Next turn, gain three energy. Says outmaneuver. Oh man, and I can take 999 gold right before two shops, honestly. Hmm, that's tempting. You could also simply fight a boss from Act 1, obtain a rare relic. That's fairly straightforward, fairly effective here. Could upgrade all cards in exchange for no longer being able to heal. I think that would probably backfire pretty thoroughly on us. It does get our defense upgraded, gets our block cards and draw cards upgraded, but 
I don't think this is our a good option compared to either taking the money or fighting the boss. It's a, a takeable money situation. I wouldn't call it amazing. We have to do one fight with two normalities. Not the worst thing with Snekoi, necessarily. And we have nor acrobatics that can discard them. Let's do it. Can it really be this easy? Maybe that's a grand mistake. We're going to find out together. Together. Give him a whale. A perfect time to have drawn it. Brilliant. Now we go out maneuver, phantasmal, terror, the middle one. Strike you. Pendive dagger spray kills next turn, maybe? Or even just double dagger spray with uh, Necronomicon? Perfect. Can't pen of it, actually. Good figure. Doesn't even matter. Beautiful. All right, took zero damage from our first fight with the normalities. That's a good sign. We shouldn't have to do another combat with both. Grab the card draw card. <laughs> uh oh. Well, that's not the fight to do with uh, two normalities in your deck, that's for sure. These guys are one of the most dangerous combats in the game. I usually advise spending potions here to get past them. We can't afford to do that because of Sozu, and we have two curses. That means we will leave them behind. And just take the value of our cash at the shop here and what value it is. Look at this. Clockwork Souvenir is here to block a debuff. Adrenaline Plus is here. Reflex Plus is here. Obviously, we're going to remove a curse. But we're going to take some other stuff. Yes to this. Yes to strength. Do I take another transmutation? Might not be worth it. Likewise, Reflex Plus is kind of awkward. <laughs> Not as good as it looked at first, actually. I do like After Image. We'll pay out for that. Mostly want to buy more relics at the next shop. The 40 card special. I mean, with Sneko Eye, how can you say no? Yeah, I don't want any of this. Okay, we'll just save money for next. And we will... Uh, Probably upgrade Predator at some point. The Terror upgrade doesn't matter. The Phantasmal upgrade doesn't matter. Let's just recall for now. So that I can rest at the next rest site if necessary. Thirty-two damage, huh? Should use the A2 cost strike actually. Doesn't matter. Six, six, six. Bane's not great. Would the deck buy a mind blast? No. No, I don't think it would be good enough. Play double predator here. I would like ten cards next turn, please. Thanks. Just 
uh... Hmm, I'm gonna draw normality next turn, aren't I? Well, that's awkward. Maybe I can acrobatics into it now. Yeah, there we go. Good. No, I can't do that. Perfect. Just give me eight additional energy, please. And then bullet time. Perfect. You all said choke wouldn't be good. Well, who's laughing now? With the power of double choke. We should have double dashed, actually. We have the kill. We have the kill. Nice. Thank you, double choke. Easy. Meal ticket will heal me. On entering the shop, I like it. So we're about to do that. These are okay. I don't think so. Gotta take the blue key here. Letter opener would have been really nice. But, uh, alas. Another adrenaline. Beautiful. Bank of preparation, not as good as you might think here, because we already have Snekawai plus Ring of the Snake. That means we're drawing nine cards on turn one. This is only one more card on turn one. <laughs> Sling of Courage would give me two more strength during elites. There are two more elites this run. This one and the one in Act 4. That's okay. I will take an Acrobatics Plus. That sounds great. So we get more card draw into this deck. Not sure how to scale our blocks for the late game. How are we going to block against the heart? I guess double dashing repeatedly, but we don't have any footwork or anything. Maybe I should take a Frozen Egg. don't really like the Master Strategy or the Adrenaline all that much. I don't think I'm going to take the Egg either. Hmm. So it's a Sling or not. And I don't think I need the Sling. I'm looking for ways to beat the Heart, specifically. None of this really helps, so I'm going to save all the cash for the next act. Dang it, letter opener. I could have had you. Fortunately, the White Bee statue does nothing with Sozu. That's the real tragedy here. Nothing at all. The bomb. And then there was many energies. Echo makes our first attack each combat do a bit more damage. Blade Dance is back from way earlier ago. Works with Choke, kind of works with After Image, but not really. I'm not going to take a Deadly Poison Plus either. Winding Halls offer us upgraded Madnesses. Those are overridden by this Neko Eye. No point in taking that. The Glowing Tesseract, on the other hand, that could have some good cards. Let's take a peek here. Bomb, in particular, would be good. I'll take a Discovery, because that can always bail us out somehow. 
Unfortunately, these Finesse Pluses aren't very good because of the Sneko Eye again. Likewise, the Chrysalis Plus. But I like Discovery here. We get to look at three random cards. We choose one to add to our hand at zero cost. That'll have to do. All right, as this deck goes into the final boss battles, I'm a little concerned here. Time Eater is definitely going to be a challenge for us as we have a hard time being relatively efficient with our cards. Is there any upgrade we could take that might really help? The Predator upgrade would be a big damage upgrade, and I think that would go a long way here. Um, although possibly this is where we're meant to just rest. I'm going to try upgrading Predator, and well, we'll see what happens. I think we might be a bit doomed in our late game. But the Sneko I can always end well for us. What do you got? Perfect. The bomb and a purity to get rid of. Let's just lose this strike. Bomb for this combat will be very helpful. Allowing us to do 50 damage with only one card play. That's good. To play the bullet time, which means losing my artifacts very well. Here we go. Problem detected. A problem being a complete lack of block. I think I'd need to use this. Can't say that went over well. Yikes. Oh dear. No way to bring him below half here. Yeah, we're in really big trouble. Really, really big trouble. Five cards to block this. I don't know that we can do that without maybe Dark Shackles. Yeah. That's not going to go over well. So I go Dash. Double Dash. Defend. And we still die, right? Yeah. GG. GG. I don't see this beating the heart anyway. So I can't say I'm too surprised to fall flat against the time meter. We had uh, a sort of efficient value deck at the end of Act 2, playing these dashes and the leg sweep and whatnot repeatedly. But we weren't able to find anything to really amplify that for Act 3. No powers that we, no footworks that we could get in play. Uh, just the one after image. And without being able to grow stronger for the late game, this run was doomed. GG. GG. At least we died rich. One does wonder maybe if taking the rare relic from the boss might have helped a little bit instead. But uh, that was an e that was a weird one. Next up, again on the silent, we gotta gotta make up for that loss here. However, I'm gonna take a quick break, refill my legs, stretch my water, grab a quick snack, or any of that happens. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. When I return, we'll try again with the lady in green. BRB, folks.
All right, folks, we're back. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, that kill total is slightly off. Let me update that real quick. And let's have a look at our next act one. Poor Silent, she had a hard time with that last one. Will this time be any better? Slime Boss says, maybe. It's always an intimidating run when Slime Boss is involved. Hmm. I like taking a gold start and going here, maybe. From there, we have some flexibility. There are probably only two elite act. Overall, that's a yikes from me. Our shop is like here? I mm, don't think so. Yeah, we should go to this early one. Take an event first or two combats? An event. Give me a chance for more money. Market Killer 78, thanks for that prime sub. Welcome to the QZ sub club. Early game is tough. Early game is, is really all about knowing how to spend your limited resources efficiently. And let's go flying knee first. Knowing how to spend your limited resources efficiently. <clears throat> and being able to quickly improve upon your starting deck to be able to tackle your first few threats can really be quite difficult to do well. Let's transform a strike here. I don't don't like losing a defend too early on the silent. We turn a strike into a terror. Okay, this is a very promising start. Another kind of uh, directing us towards physical attack synergy set of early cards for this silent run um but maybe just maybe Ooh, i like going backstab pen nib here or backstab clockwork souvenir is also pretty good pen nib is a particularly good way to get past the slime boss uh and it's just really nice in conjunction with the backstab Making every 10th attack deal double damage could let us do some pretty good stuff. Here and there. I'm gonna do it. Let's pick up that pen nib. A good start. And let's take two more combats here. From there we can decide if we want to do something like this or... Go around. If we get two good potions from these combats, we might go for the Burning Elite. Poor bird. Never knew what hit him. Look at that. 15 health after turn one. Brutal stuff, man. A caw. A strength potion. Okay, we might be going for the Burning Elite after all here. Double backstab? Three backstabbing. I could also absolutely see picking up a sucker punch here to extend our weekend a little bit. Let's do double backstab. The front load silent build. Silent, in particular, really excels at this sort of strategy, using your turn one bonus straw and a bunch of just really decent base damage attacks to try to outright end fights on turn one or turn two with raw damage output. It can be really, really effective for non-boss combats, in particular. Ooh, and an all at attack for some area damage. Also good against Slime Boss. I'm thinking that we get to go this way now. We've actually gotten so strong that we're able to handle the Elites of Act 1 with ease. Thanks to Terror, Pen Nib, Strength Potion, and area damage here. We can kill one of the three sentries almost instantly. We can chunk through the Grumlin Knob, no problem. Lagavulin shouldn't be trouble either. I like it. Let's clobber some elites, shall we? First up, Gremlin Knob. No terror turn one. I think this is the fight where the strength potion gets used. Would be nice in the burning fight, but that'll be an easier base model to deal with. We don't want to get clobbered by the knob. Ooh. 
Bottom draw on terror is no good. Are we gonna kill next turn? Two strength, this is eight, 12. So we deal 12 plus 18. Is that right? Oh, we have Pendib too, actually. So yeah, I can play a defend here. Maybe could have even played two defends this turn. Okay, I wouldn't say we got a very good relic here. The Darkstone Periap gives us max health if we get a curse. Don't think I want any of this either. Like, maybe Sneaky Strike? But realistically, no. But, more importantly, we got through the knob fight with little damage taken. And we can now upgrade our all-out attack for the next fight. So that is what we shall do. Get a plus strength Lagavulin. That's definitely not too bad. We're going to wait for Terror to be drawn here. While also trying to up the pen nib a little bit here or there. This looks like where we start. And we'll be using the weak potion as well. Let's go full block for this turn. Beautiful. One damage, Burning Elite Lagavulin. Get offered a Bottled Flame, allowing us to put an attack in our opening hand that could be our all out attack. Should I take a Fumes? Yeah, I think so. I think we want to be able to get... One, it'll be helpful against Slime Boss. Two, I think we want to back up sort of damage strategy. Get a little bit of poison into this deck so that we can take advantage of things like Bouncing Flask or Catalyst as ways to deal with Time Eater later in the run. We did have the problem last run where we failed to address the problem that is Time Eater and so perished to that fight because we weren't able to get any scaling powers. Got this one early. I guess I will bottle the area damage card. That means we can set up pen nibbed all attack for the elites of Act 2 in particular, which I really like. Do I want to look at another shop here? We could afford to remove a card. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, versus what? One more combat this act? I guess that's not a bad thing, necessarily. I don't have potions at the moment, so maybe taking more combats to get these potion slots filled is a good idea. Going to a shop without enough money to make it really worthwhile is a bit of a waste. Ah. Well, there you go. Guaranteed potions. One potion from every combat, says White Bee Statue. I like it. I like it a lot. Yes, the relics relics that we find will be the same regardless of path. So, for example, if I go to this chest instead of this one, it's the same, should be the same relic inside. Do I take another Doppelganger? It's a card I have an unreasonable like of, I think, is Doppelganger. Might be a better slice. Or a better skip. I actually like Doppelganger on turn one what we're doing. Let's give it a chance here again, Doppelganger. Such a fascinating card. Wow, nice turn one.
poison card so we can stack that, or an early piercing whale. Let's take our first piercing whale. Really good against slime boss, and we'll be very, very happy to have a piercing whale in Act 2 and onward, I think. Also nice for removing uh, artifact layers from the enemies in this fight. It's a perfect turn one draw. Perfect fight for the regen potion, too. Ooh, I could even kill this one on turn one, prevent some dazed. Yeah, let's go for the full block. <clears throat> oh, that mod, the mod that you're thinking of, Hero Destroyer, actually changes how the game works in order to make the relic preview function correctly. Uh, that's not how Spire normally operates. But I know the one you're thinking of. We've played with it on stream before. It allows you to preview what relic you're going to get from chests and elites. It's really cool in concept. But in order to make it work, they had to completely change how Aspire generates relics. When you have the relic. Awkward. But acceptable. Just give me the bonus draw. Thought so. Really now? Now it definitely feels like it would have been correct to <clears throat> kill the kill the sentry on turn one. We've we felt the full punish of those three extra days that were added. Oof. Good news is I think we'll be flying regardless. Plus one strength again, just like last run. Very, very helpful here. I think it makes the slice worth considering. Although not necessarily great. It's worth considering. Don't think I want an outmaneuver either. No, we'll keep skipping for now. Move transformer upgrade. I definitely would not mind an additional transform here. Grabbing a bonus upgrade is not bad either. We're going to upgrade Fumes before Slime Boss. We grab the additional upgrade here. That would let me upgrade, say, Doppelganger alongside. Or we can get rid of another strike, which is also pretty reasonable. Although the Vajra and the Pendib mean strikes aren't too bad. Let's take a transform. What do you got? A tactician. That is definitely worse than the strike. And that's okay. I guess I should have speed potioned there. For that three health. Second noxious fumes. Interesting. Double fumes would be really good for slime boss. Feels unnecessarily good for slime boss, actually. It's an interesting strategy for longer fights. Let's give it a try. We'll upgrade one of them. I don't think I need them both upgraded for quite a while. And that now gives us an opening to say, take a catalyst at any point, which would be quite nice. Good. So that would actually split you in two already? Holy moly.
I don't think I'm quite ready for that. 87 minus 13. Yeah, that would also be a split in two. This is a bit mediocre. Hmm. Slime Crush. With five poison per turn, we should be in pretty good shape here. Yeah. With this one, we can you. They both split. Hmm. Just speed potion triple defend is very reasonable here. We're guaranteed to get a potion, so we might as well save some health. And the fume should carry us the rest of the way. Good stuff. GG. Ooh, like a corpse explosion here. Corpse explosion allows us to kill all enemies by killing one enemy. Gives us a further way to stack poison damage as well. Dotedai is also pretty dang good with our bonus strength and with our pen nib, a very powerful area damage card. But I think... I think we're better off with the corpse explosion than just targeting down the one enemy that we used it on. Really good for a couple of later game boss fights, too. What I'd like to see here. Pyramid purple play, right? Yeah. Not a bad um, Pandora's box either. Pandora's box letting us transform all of our strikes and defends is beautiful. Empty Cage letting us remove two more cards is also pretty beautiful, but man, do I like Runic Pyramid. If only I could take all of them. Ah, feels like a clear case of the uh, the pyramid to me. Letting us retain our entire hand every turn is such a powerful thing on the silent. Silent has so many different cards that are highly dependent on being played at the correct turn. Piercing Well is a, a very, very big example, but stuff like Catalyst and Weakness Sources and, and many, many others are all very similarly positioned here. What a fascinating act. You know, I have to say that uh, White Beast Statue Runic Pyramid is probably capable of defeating quite a few elites this act. Especially thanks to that corpse explosion. Uh, I think we're well equipped to handle everybody except Book of Stabbing. Book of Stabbing, we'd need either a second Piercing Whale or maybe an Outmaneuver or something. I'm not sure. Either way, we should tackle a shop early on here. From there, we can upgrade something and then fight maybe three elites, like this. There's even a four elite line, but I think that'd be rather difficult to accomplish. Malaise would also be very good for the Book of Stabbing, that's correct. Uh, so this is just a kill, right? We just kill them both right now. That's the power of the front load silent. Use your opening hand to just instantly kill your opponents, and you don't have to worry about having too many other answers in the draw pile. Go corpse explosion, double edge backstab, backstab all attack, that'd be what? 12, 36 plus 14 is 50, right? Yeah.
Didn't even have to use a potion for that. Used to be okay upgraded. Don't think we're going to take... Well, maybe Acro because of Tactician. Have to upgrade that Tactician. Rather have a Prepared. Maybe. Ah, heck, we'll take one. Let's go... Explosive Pot over Regen Pot. Uh, over Swift Pot, rather. Keep the Regen Potion. Card removals are very, very valuable with Pyramid, so I will take the opportunity to remove a strike here. Although I do dislike that that happens right before a shop. I guess we could go around, go to this shop. But I'd like to have the opportunity to maybe not fight that elite. Looks like that's probably what I'll do. Removing in this manner also doesn't increase the price of future removals, which is rather nice. Ooh, Flechette's one of my favorites with Runic Pyramid. Um, doubly so with Vajra here. Flechette's hits once per each skill in our hand. And uh, we could go with another striker move alongside, too. That's beautiful. That might be what we need for the Book of Stepping, actually. Is a Flechette's. Could see Nunchaku being good with as an energy generator as well. Or he can contain many flechettes. Explain how. Almost want to take the backflip alongside. Almost. I didn't have the acrobatics. It'll be a hundred gold to remove here. So if I get money here somehow. Hmm. I won't be able to remove the shame though. It's actually not the worst time to rob this guy. We get six max health and a relic. But having to carry this curse into a couple of fights does seem awkward to me. I'll say no. That particular curse doesn't get retained by the pyramid. So that particular aspect wouldn't have been a problem. Oh, we're supposed to use this. My bad. Should probably have played the back stabs there when we weren't weakened as well. I was trying to draw into the thingamajig. The terror. That didn't work out. Look at how that poison stacks so quickly. Twelve by two. Just want the regen here. More unupgraded stuff. I guess Dagger Spray is kind of okay. Because of Vajra, but I don't think it's okay enough. We're going to upgrade. Oh, there's so many good things to upgrade. Tactician, Terror, Flechettes, Acrobatics, Doppelganger. They're all good upgrades. Corpse Explosion. If I want to be Book of Stabbing, I probably want to upgrade either Corpse Explosion or one of my energy cards. Get this tactician upgraded. These two attacking me on turn one, even. How rude. Instance where it could be worth to kill the uh, mystic on turn one. 12, 12, 30, not quite. With the explosive potion, yes. All right, lady. Prepare to die. I 
Thanks for not murdering me, sir. Sneaky Strike and Eviscerate. Those are both decent here. Sneaky Strike in particular feels pretty good. Being free after discarding a card. We've got the Auto Attack, we've got the Acrobatics, we've got the Survivor, and I want more discard cards anyway for the Tactician. So it's essentially 13 damage for free, and I think that's pretty good. Help us navigate this gauntlet. Double Wizards. Also rude? Hello? You have no skills. Dang it, game. Alright, well, no wizards allowed, okay? This isn't Hogwarts. Nine skill flechettes, the ultimate power. But wait, we can do better. Fifteen times seven. Who's laughing at flechettes now? This one's upgraded. There's also a reflex to go with the discard stuff. Reflex tactician rink pyramid's definitely a thing. Free upgrade sneaky strike, also definitely a thing. I'm gonna take this sneaky strike. And we're gonna go liquid memories over ancient potion. I think these next two elites will be easy kills. Might have to rest before champ, but we'll see. The boot. Unblocked attack damage goes from 4 or less up to 5. We've already got bonus strength. I don't think we'll get a lot of use out of the boot. So the boot is not invited to my birthday party. This looks like it'll hurt a bit. Unless... This is where Pendant would have been helpful. Is there any way to get front and back this turn? I'd have to use both potions? That's okay, though. A white beast statue. Yeah, I'm sure I can do that, actually. Yeah, I can do that. has to be both. Let's do this. Peace Bite lets us remove cards at rest sites. That looks pretty spicy. And I also really like another Acrobatics for more draw discard, even though it is the only unupgraded card in this card reward, it's still really nice. Give me that. Strange Spoon. Shame about Kunai, that would have been really, really good to pick up. I think more card removals are just fine though. We want in Venom. Not for the price I'd have to pay. Let's remove a card. Nothing else here really speaks to me. The more card removals you can get, the better each one becomes, so paying for removals alongside toking with the Peace Pipe can be a really powerful one-two punch combo. 
to get your deck down to a really powerful subset of cards. I'll just hold on to those for a rainy day, I suppose. Okay. sufficiently. Okay, that's fine. Wanted a corpse explosion earlier in the turn. I guess playing Piercing Whale afterwards would have been correct, not before. This is fine, though. Uh, four skills. Won't be more next turn. Seems like we were just fine. GG. Okay, so I probably don't have to rest before champ. That's good. Love anchor for 10 block on turn one with pyramid. Probably want to take a nightmare here. Why? Because nightmare lets us duplicate an important card. For champ fight, we might be duplicating noxious fumes. We could do things like duplicate tactician, or if we get one, duplicate reflex. We can duplicate powers that we pick up after this point. Just a really abusable card with Runic Pyramid in general. Giant Book. Interesting. Necronomicon Sneaky Strike is really powerful. Um, and I think the other two relics would be good here. I do have Regal Pillow, so we can rest to collect this relic. I'll happily pay 21 health here then. We get the Enchilada. On turn one, we add a zero-cost power into our hand. That could be really, really useful, as long as the snake plant doesn't kill me. I think we'll be okay, though. Yeah, Nightmare Target's acquired indeed. Snake Plant Target acquired. Get out of here. Double Block Potion actually means we probably don't need to rest before Champ still. That maneuver's an interesting target. I think I'll just take a second copy of Flechette's here to really round out our offense. This really doesn't need upgrading thanks to the Vajra. And we could upgrade, or we could toke here. It's a couple good upgrades. We could upgrade one of the two fumes. We could upgrade one of our energy reduction cards. Heck, we could even upgrade one of our blocks, considering that our blocking game is not that good. Maybe we're going to rest after all. Champ's going to hit me pretty hard. Get a lot of health for doing so, too. Strategy against Champ, I think, is going to be, again, Nightmare Noxious Fumes. That does require me to essentially survive a, an execute. Let's rest. Unless we get a really lucky Incaridian, which we definitely did not. Yeah, I think this was the best choice. Sure, those daggers are going to be annoying, actually. Right, and this is why we rested. Because this. 27, and I got nothing. Three block. And a block potion.
And then again, basically nothing here. Champ fight can often be really nasty in the first couple of turns like this. Where he gives you your first taunt turn. Where he'll take a short break from murdering you. Piercing though could have been oddly helpful too, actually. He's already angry. Oh boy. Life got complicated fast here. Let's do the following. Frail here. Bit ominous. Only five skills. Got one piercing whale and not much else to work with here. I think we might have needed to line up our damage a little bit better. But I'm actually shocked at how much damage we ended up taking per turn with uh, how crap our bl blocks are when frail. No footwork seen up to this point. Do we have what it takes? Not if I can't focus on my gameplay. We don't. Corpse explosion's not gonna be useful. All right, uh, so we made him weak. What can we do here? I don't think this is enough, right? I have to draw into the tactician. Or otherwise find a kill here. Doesn't look like we have it. It's not quite enough. Shoot, I think I cost myself this. Dang. No. GG. That was a very winnable fight. Basically threw it into the garbage. But. Can't play perfectly every time. not sure I want to. I don't think I do. Why don't we play a different game? Why don't we play a different game? we play a little game called Floppy Nights. That's what we're going to be playing. Get on over to our variety here.
Hopefully this won't be too loud. A bit more reasonable. So! Uh, even a little bit lower, actually. Floppy Nights! This is a game we've seen a couple of times on uh, stream before. Made by Rose City Games and featuring one of the artists from Dicey Dungeons. Floppy Nights is a little bit of deck builder, a little bit of strategy. Yeah, same people as, uh, same, same artist at least as Dicey Dungeons. Different developers, though. But uh, I would definitely say there's some inspiration there for sure. Floppy Nights is fully released on Steam as of today. So you can pick it up and, uh, and try out the full release yourself. This is not a sponsored segment, to be clear. I just think that this game is super cool. And since keys were passed my way, I wanted to take a look at it here on release day. Especially since I'm not feeling the vibe in Spire right now. Here's a make and made their cousin buy Dicey Dungeon so they could play it? Well, maybe you'll end up in the same situation here. Floppy Nights is uh, not a roguelite, not a game designed to be permadeath. It's got a campaign that you play through with four chapters, and you kind of... Uh, progress and develop a strategic deck of cards as you do, I believe. Also available on the X-Pass, Xbox Game Pass. So it's out on Steam and on Xbox today, I believe. Without further ado, let's take a look at what exactly Floppy Nights has for us. Love the sound effect vibes in this. So we've seen these characters before. Phoebe and Carlton are our protagonists. Carlton is Phoebe's robotic arm. Phoebe, is it complete yet? Just a sec, Carlton. Advanced robotics are not that simple. I have waited an entire week. It only took you a month to make me. Implementing an upgrade for me should only take 30 minutes. Maximum. 30 minutes? Are your math processors broken? Relax. Almost there. Just a few more screws and then... All right. You're ready. Ready for what? This! I just finished installing a floppy disk drive on you. What does this disk do? You're about to find out. I put a very special program on this one. Ooh, can we test it out? Sure can. It created plant... The kicking succulent. I call them floppy knights. They're tangible predictions I made by sequencing elemental magic into code. They can touch things, grab stuff, and in this one's case, kick my tools. Mom and dad are always on me to take on a magic profession, but I keep telling them magic is overrated. Science is the real magic. I was just thinking these floppy knights could help us take on odd jobs around town. Let me show you how to use them, Carlton. Ah, yes, basic mercenary work. Classic use for superpowers. How's it going, uh, Suryash Shirook? This is indeed the 1.0... Uh, well, 1.1, actually. Full release of Floppy Nights available out today. So yes, this is the full game. And as long as it's efficiently entertaining, that's what I'll play is the, the full game. Alright, let's go over the basics. Loading, training, simulation... You don't need to say loading training simulation for it to work, you know. Correct. However, it is important to have fun while you work. That is correct. And that's why we're here. Battle start. This floppy knight is called Succulent Kicker. We'll practice by fighting him with another floppy knight I've made. Meet Captain Thistle. Like a commander unit, sort of our team leader. Health, damage, movement, and I think range are the four stats. 
get removed from the field if they drop to low health. Sp -d SPD is how many tiles they can move. And RNG is the distance that they can attack. Is it now? On any given level, we have a deployment zone indicated by our blue tiles. And once we have units on the board, we can play other cards from our hand and move them. Plow ahead. Now that they're here, let's use them. Each turn, our commander generates a special card for us to use. We draw five cards of our own from the deck. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Now that a unit is on the field, we can play other cards on them. But we have limited energy every turn. Also vaguely familiar. Anything we don't play gets discarded at the end of our turn. I am covering up the end turn button, which is probably a good place for me to be. Let's kind of optimize a little bit here. You can see the number in the discard pile more cleanly. Perfection. Now let's use Captain Thistle's special card to move. And they also get to move. Reptiles equal their speed stat, which is three currently. There are a couple ways a unit can attack. See that little sword icon on Captain Thistle? Each unit gets one free attack each turn, costing no energy to use. If you see the sword icon on a unit, that means they haven't used their free attack yet. I don't think that was there when we played the demo. victory. Notice that the sword icon is gone now, which means we used the free attack. Don't forget to use those. Is the general just there. We get coins? I'm not sure what those are for. Phoebe, that was incredible. We are so powerful. Everything worked perfectly. We should try this out on a real gig. I estimate we are ready to take on a job and make some... Sick cash. I love when you use human phrases, Carlton. Let's go. Mom! Dad! Phoebe. I hope we're not interrupting anything. Your mother and I wanted to talk. About how I need to get a job. I know, you've told me like a million times. Phoebe, you're 16 years old. You've been shut up here tinkering away at all this stuff for so long. We're worried about you, honey. I demand that you get out there and enjoy life. Take them on some responsibility. Get a job. It'll be great for you. You might even make a few friends. I have friends, Mom. I have Carlton. Yes, but you built Carlton. No offense, dear. None taken. Listen, I have a plan so we won't get some boring job. I'll even make enough money to buy my own place. Wow, your own house, huh? You really do have lofty goals. Get it? Because you'll be in a loft. Everyone else my age is doing it. I can fall behind. I've made an invention that will help us take on work. And I've completed it just in time for the Gadget Cup competition, too. If I win that first place cash prize, I'll have all the cash I need. The Gadget Cup. There, that's that science tournament they hold in town every year, right? Right, and this year I'm finally old enough to compete. We'll make some quick cash if we win. You know, having regular responsibilities and people that depend on you isn't such a bad thing, Phoebe. I've been able to use my fire magic to do all the smithing for all of Toggletown. Ah, that's why Mom is strangely buff. You're the blacksmith. And everyone loves her for it. We're always inundated with thank you cakes. We had to get a second fridge. Phoebe, we're really proud of how talented you are with all this technology stuff. But if this plan of yours doesn't work, you'll have to go work as a blacksmith with your mother, at least until you find something more stable. Like being a horse trainer. 
Fine, this'll work though. I've already got our first job lined up for us. Just give me a couple days. We'll leave you to it, honey. Oh wow, there's quite a few locations on the world map. The outskirts. Volcano, castle. Uh, we've The demo that we've played, I think, covered the outskirts. And then the second time we played the demo, it was in the volcano area. But all of the rest of this is news to me. A couple little icons here. All right, what's in the outskirts? Bandits! Main objective, defeat all enemies. Bonus objective, don't lose any units. Let's go. Hello and welcome, Ghost. Today we're checking out some Floppy Nights. Game that released today on Steam, featuring the artist from Dicey Dungeons, a title we previously enjoyed on stream, and uh, lines neatly up with the genres that we like here on the channel, so... Very excited to be checking it out. We're here! The job board said to meet th at this farm on the outskirts of town. I wonder who our client is. Oh, it all sounds so official. Client. Job. Look at us, Phoebe. Soon we will no longer be an unnecessary burden on your parents. Jeez, Carlton, we really need to work on your bedside manner. Can I help you? Uh, hey, are you the one who posted the job? Yeah, you must be Phoebe. Thought you said there'd be two of you. There are two of us. I am Carlton, an artificially intelligent arm created by Phoebe. Yeah, that's great. Uh, right, what seems to be the problem? It says here on the job posting that you're, uh, terrorized by vegetarian goblins? Listen, kid, I try to keep a tight farm, but every day those forest goblins are snatching up all my crops. Perhaps we could grow you some more carrots. How hard could it be? That sounds like a lot of work, Carlton. I just need you to keep watch and keep them away from my crops. I love keeping watch. I do not need to blink, so I am very proficient at it. Also, as an arm, I may hold many watches. Okay, but I'm going to need some kind of down payment. Here. The seeds? I meant cash. What am I supposed to do with these? You could make a lot of money planting those. Now go take care of my goblin problem. Fine, but you'd better leave a good tip when we're done here. Carlton, we'll post up over there by the target sighted. What? The goblins, they are right over there. I told you, I am proficient at keeping watch. Hey, check it out, fellas. I don't know what kind of magic this lady's using to make food come out of the ground, but I'm loving it. Let's fill the bags up. Those little punks, what are you waiting for? Go get them. Hyper Sniper. It's time to pay the piper. So, Goblin Grunts. The jams, though. Ghost! What do you call a specter that really likes chicken? A poultry geist. Milk jug. Thank you so much for 10 months of support. Two more for that full year. So. Creates plow ahead every turn. can completely escape from them. We click on enemies to see their movement range. Is that a thing? Remember when I said the commander was sort of like our team leader? We can let other units take as many hits as we want, but our commander is the leader, and if their hit points reach zero, we lose. We click on any enemy and see their movement and attack ranges. Yes. But does it actually show the, like, tiles highlighted? Doesn't seem to. Unfortunate. And we get the first move. We've got three move by default. Plow ahead gives the commander four. Not 
sure we're allowed to... Hit him. And then I can move down, make another attack with this other attack card in our hands. Yeah. Boop. And then we just want to stay out of range of the slobby gobby. Gross. Two, three. Can't reach our range of us, so we should be able to just end turn here. Didn't do anything. Do they not move if they can't get into range? That would make sense. Flip to... And so is a... Uh... Oh. He's got five health, actually. Boop. Let's see. So we can move, and this turns into then Reap, which is a attack card? Yes. Go back over here. Plus one attack would have been nice to deal with the uh, Chunky Boy, but we could just, in a turn, attack twice, I think, to deal with this one. Yeah. I'll use the free attack. This little first tutorial style level, just using the commander to deal with uh, low health melee enemies. So we get new stuff, which we can then use to, I believe, modify our deck of cards. There's a deck building aspect here to Floppy Knights. That means that as we progress further into the campaign, we're going to have more options for the strategies that we can employ, which I think is very cool. Well, ah, leave us alone, you stinky losers. Who are you calling a loser? <laughs> hey, you little twerps, cut it out. Those are mine. Uh-oh, the angry lady's here. Hurry up, grab as much as you can and scram. Don't just stand there, chase after them. Hey, pretty sure that's out of our scope of work. As if, you didn't scare them at all. They're gonna be back as soon as you leave. Man, I thought this was gonna be easy. I'm paying you to get to the root of this problem. That's some vegetable humor? Nice. Go! <laughs> okay, we're going. So, the deck building. We can add cards to our deck here on the deck building screen. 30 card maximum. On this side are the cards currently in the deck, and this side is our backpack, all the cards we've collected so far. Cards with the lock icon on them are base cards that cannot be removed from the deck. We can switch the commander out, but for only for other commanders. Cards that don't have a lock icon can be removed. Minimum of 12 cards, maximum of 30. Interesting. Upgrade a plants card. Creating a strong deck will be critical to our success. I believe it. I wonder if infinite combos are possible in this game. Plants card. So these are the signature moves of our commander? Hmm. Interesting. Currently the deck is just basic moves, attacks, and the units. We can add another basic attack. Let's do that. Let's swap out one move for one attack. Squad attack! Destroy the satellite in five turns or less. You got it. Woof! Man, they've got little legs, but they can run fast. It is re really too bad you don't have super strong robotic legs. Carlton, we've been over this. I'm not going full bionic woman. But I am so strong. Being a robot is so cool. You should really try it. Good grief. 
Ha ha! Good grief. Humans say the weirdest things. Phoebe, look! They are using a communication device. Do you think that there are other goblins they are allied with? Are you saying there are more of them somehow? Good grief. Let's deal with these twerps. I want to get paid as quickly as possible. Me too, buddy. Hey, that goblin's got a hammer. To win the battle, we must destroy the goblin's satellite communication device. Is that an enemy spawner? What is that? Clean armor and forests. Enemies that spawn on this tile at the end of the countdown. <laughs> so let's just do one damage. So we should be safe from goblin grunts in the forest. I imagine. Could even KO and then get into the... Hmm. Can't KO this one as he's got armor. Could actually go around. Good idea. Oh yeah, you gotta spawn way back here, huh? I'm wondering if we could maybe use the Petunia to make ranged attacks over the mountain. works on any unit, right? That's right. This Petunia, two damage, two range. There's no attacks of opportunity or anything like that. I have observed that some terrain will give our units a bonus. These forests will give a unit extra defense against an attack. So we can make attacks at the satellite from there. Perfect. I should have done that. So we should have put thorns on them first, actually. What is your ability? Hob bopper. Three move, three attack. So if we let Captain Thistle get bopped, I'm sure we'll be in very sad times. One health left. Oh, the Slobby Gubby has four attack power. I did not realize that. Well, that's no good. But I think that we can simply destroy the satellite here. If we have Captain Thistle make their free attack here, we can then move through. Plowhead, yeah, Plowhead gets me here. Take your shot. 
GG. We get a new end unit barrel cactus. He's a chonky boy with seven health. And branch out. Bonus damage if the enemy is on a forest tile. Better than an attack, I suppose. I repeat, the losers are here. We are retreating to the river. Where do you think you're going? I'm looking at them right now. They look stinky and mean. Be advised to take caution should you see them. Goblins, fall back. How dare they? We are not stinky or mean. We are nice and cute. Oh, now they've made it personal. Come on, Carlton. We're going to finish this job no matter what. Let's stop these veggie thieves and get our money. And a sincere apology. Verbally and in writing. Way ahead of you. How's it going, Shmammerin? Thanks for 14 months. Ready to craft some cards? Hello, what? Let's make some new cards. What do you mean, make some new cards? Tree Folk Rock. Can make basic attacks. Seed Sword. Attack an enemy and boost. Each time this card is played, it turns into a stronger version of itself. Zero cost. Draw one card. Gain one energy. Well, that seems like an accelerator to me. Just a free one energy, essentially. Make one of those. So it's like a shop, but not a shop. It's a crafting shop. Welcome. Hello, welcome, Kazdon. You picked the perfect day to show up for the first time. This is Floppy Nights. Uh, adorable strategy meets deck building. Seems like a fun time so far. They're mesmerizing. Did they head this way? I believe so. I... Well, 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 looky here. Oh dear. That voice. Fancy seeing you here, Phoebes. Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Snarleton. What are you two doing here? Can't you see we're in the middle of something? Exactly. Word around town is you're testing out your new invention for the Gadget Cup. Now that we're both old enough to enter, Alex and I wanted to seize up the competition we will be... Beating tomorrow. <laughs> Unlikely, you two are nothing but a couple of copycats. It will be us who win the Gadget Cup. Alex, you rip off my inventions all the time. Snarlton over there is proof. Just observing his inferior monitor display really gets my goat. I will have you know, Alex programmed me to be far superior to your obsolete specs. Oh yeah, prove it. Do long division right now. Alex, will you just get out of here? We're trying to finish a job. Ah, finally joined civilized society and got yourself a job, eh? Are you moving out of your parents' house? Took you long enough. You know, you never accepted the invite to my housewarming party at my new centrally located bungalow. It has crown molding. Ah, buzz off. No way, we settle this right now. Your crummy little science fair project versus my weaponized slimes. Finally, I'll prove who's the best inventor in town really is. No more, Phoebe's so smart. Phoebe's such a talented engineer. Phoebe has the cutest eyebrows. Get ready to see what it feels like to be second place, Phoebes. How do you suppose we should proceed, Phoebe? I don't think there's any way around it, Carlton. We gotta kick her butt so we can finish the goblin job. There's no convincing her when she gets like this. <laughs> exactly. Battle begin. Get to the veggies before the slimes do. That is the objective. The bonus objective. Artillery slime. A combat slime. Three attack power. 
I like the way they wiggle. Kind of a cool animation. How's it going, Chrono? Just in time to catch some floppy nights. Two, buddy. Easy. That's a good turn. So much movement power. Get this one next. Don't think it can move to reach me. The artillery slime might be able to hit me. Let's see. Totally good. There's Spitunia. Yeah, speed is the same as movement range. So far, Floppy Nights is delightfully charming. I've heard there's uh, challenge levels that are available once you beat a chapter. I'm rather interested to see what those end up looking like. The Bam Boomer! Oh, that was my favorite... Uh unit from the demos that we've played so far. The Bamboomer's got a range of three. Just some serious attack power. How is this possible? You dumb little freaks destroyed all our weaponized slimes. Alex, just give it up already. You'll always be two steps behind us. Mark my words, Phoebes, you may have won this time, but the Gadget Cup will be a whole different story. Snarlton, let's go. We have some adjustments to make before our grand victory. Ha ha ha. <laughs> well, we can give her top marks for effort, I guess. And synchronized laughing. At least we dealt with that little interruption. Phoebe, I am all for standing around basking in our own glory, but we must get a move on. All right, all right. Crack the whip, Carlton. Let's crack down... Track down! Some goblins. The fun zone. Oh, wait. I meant to equip the bamboomer. No! Alright, we'll do this one without Bam Boomer. Hey, losers! I'm impressed you made it this far, but this is our turf. What is this place? This here is the fun zone, and losers like you will just stink it up. I see just moving along before we have to get tough with you. You're not going to stop us from taking that magical ground food. We were sent here to stop you, even if it means we have to conquer your fun zone. Yeah, we're going to stink it all up. Alright, we'll do this the hard way. Don't say I didn't warn you. Blattle start. To win this battle, reach the target goal and hold it for two turns. Or defeat all the enemies. 
Bonus objective, don't lose any units during this process, which actually does sound rather challenging here. Deployment zone terminal. And they've got spawn point too. Hmm. Wow, this area is quite large. You can scroll around to see the whole map by clicking and dragging. We can also use the arrow keys. You got it. So Slobby Gobby is a really good attack power. The armor goes away if you get hit. Two, three. So we should be safe on those tiles. Yeah. That's where we'll end our turn. Carlton, look, a deactivated deployment zone. If we put a unit there, we can get it online and use the deployment zone to advance. past. to just move Captain Thistle into the middle, make my free attack here. Get rid of that thing. No more energy this turn. Got a little bit of a boop there, but that's okay. I'm not planning on taking any more hits with Thistle. Oh my. Remember, if we lose Captain Thistle, we do lose the battle. Not that dangerous, though. We've got 12 health, though, so I can't just bop the, the hob bopper easily at all. So I think we want to fall back a little bit. Get some reinforcements in here. I can have me a knockback. Move unit and destroy. Hmm. Kind of a free move. I like it. Succulent kicker is very easy to, to lose. Gotta be careful about it. Yeah, get closer. That's right. Is destroy like exhaust? Yes, I believe so. So we can play all these cards. So my kicker only has two attack power. So two attacks from Captain Thistle plus a shot from Spitunia will KO the... the bopper.
think I'm not. Got a lot of attack power here. Not sure if poison applies before or after the enemy gets to do its thing. I don't think it much matters here. Hyper Sniper, three attack, three move, two range. So one, two, three. You could shoot me here. Don't want to get Captain Pistol blocked by Hyper Sniper. That'd be very bad. I want a Hyper Sniper to hit the Spatunia. Something like this. So you have what? Three move? So go one, two, three. We don't want to go here. We want to go here then. Nobody else has any moves. She couldn't move to attack, she decided not to at all. Makes sense to me. Attack an enemy with knockback. Uh, Captain Thistle has five attack power, so three attacks, which is what I have here. I can get them both. Turn a unit to your hand. any returning to do, because everybody's dead. I'm not sure if you're allowed to block the spawners. We'll have to try that. Vera, I believe that's a new leader? Luke commander thing? Restore one health to other units each turn. Cycle Sunbathe. Interesting. No, the fun zone! It's ruined! Listen to me, you've got to stop taking that poor farmer's food. But how else are we supposed to get magic ground food? Ah, uh, here. What's this, bunch of little boogers? They're seeds. Vegetables aren't magic ground food. They're just plants. Put some here and you can grow your own food. What? R really? That's it? Tell you what, I'm going to take half of this huge staff of veggies you stole. You can keep the other half. That should tide you over till you grow your own food. But in return, you have to leave that farmer alone, okay? This is a good deal, too. If I had my way, I would have incinerated you with my laser eyes. Maybe you're not such losers after all. Okay, it's a deal. Come on, Carlton. Let's go receive, retrieve our cash money. Haha, <laughs> yeah, let's get our sick cash. Well, I have to admit it, I didn't think you'd pull it off. Whoa, don't sneak up on me like that. Excuse me, were you following us? I just wanted to make sure the job got done properly is all. And it did. Here's your payment. Payment! Thank you, this is great. Thanks for taking care of my goblin problem. Those floppy knights of yours are pretty handy. You're that kid from town who's always making those inventions, aren't you? That's me, we're going to enter the Gadget Cup. And emerge victorious. Ah, didn't you hear? The Gadget Cup's been cancelled. What? Did my audio input capture just fail? Did you say the competition has been cancelled? How and why? Cindercliff Volcano has really been acting up lately, falling rocks and all that. The fairgrounds are in the blast zone, so they had to cancel. Baby, my data bases indicate that Cindercliff Volcano is from the next town over. It is, come on, we have to go check this out. Thanks for the money, ma'am. Sure thing, good luck. Cancel.
Phoebe, look, there is a notice on the sign. Cancelled! Due to unexpected nearby volcanic activity causing safety concerns, we've cancelled the Gadget Cup competition. But we have to win that prize. How else are we going to get the cash to move out? Well, we could just work a regular job for a number of years and invest our savings at... No, no, no! The competition cannot be cancelled! We have to do something about this. Come on, Carlton, let's make our way to Cindercliff right away and see what's up with this volcano business. Surely if the volcano uh, doesn't explode, they'll uncancel the competition. BB, I'm receiving a message from an unknown contact. Yeah, I wonder who that could possibly be. <laughs> Their house is an eye patch. Oh, hello, Phoebes. I got your number from your parents. Did you know they think we're friends? Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> anyway, I finally come up with a master plan to prove my superior intellect. I've crafted the most ingenious challenges for you and your silly little knights. I even made the decks you'll be using because I know you'll need the help. Why don't you try them out? Unless, of course, you're worried you'll fail. Later! <laughs> so we've unlocked challenge levels. Kickers versus Gobs. Let's try the first challenge for level. These are remixes of the levels we've already been through, but with specific challenge subset to them. Designed for more experienced players, the devs mentioned. Curious how these feel. To win this challenge, defeat all the enemies. All we have are kickers. Kick plus and hop plus. These gobbies will take us out in one hit. Upgrade a plants card in your hands. So upgrade the kicker. Cool. And this one is technically my commander, apparently. have knockback too. Oh no. <laughs> this actually seems rather bad. I want to stay out of their hitting range. determines whether they move or not. Now the combo! Boot! Oh, you didn't move! Did the only upgraded ones do that? How interesting. deeply satisfying. That's what I learned. Bonk. 
So what do we get for doing that? Some coins. I think you could only get the coins from each level once, so there's a finite amount of currency. I wanted to configure my deck anyway, right? We need the Bamboomer. Swap out Spitunia, add the Bamboomer. Cactus juice. Let's try grow as well. Swap the hero for the barrel man. We swap these out? The wristing. Branch out's better than an attack. Barely. Okay. I'm always open to game suggestions of the Desert Fox, although I get way more suggestions than I can possibly play, generally speaking, so I don't look at or investigate every game. One turn, you say. Let's try it. Destroy the satellite in one turn. I see we've got Spitunia to start. That's going to be essential, I'm sure. You want to start here? on Earth? A weird change to phrasing. Unit gains plus one attack this turn. Move one extra tile? Why is that different phrasing from the unupgraded version of Plow Ahead? Rehydrate. This unit's currently on a water tile. Move extra tiles. That gets cheaper. Five energy. So we need to be able to get over to the thingy and make two poison shots. I think that means upgrading the the poison shots so that I can play move, thorns, I can play everything that way. Actually, no, we, we don't use the basic move. We use plow ahead and hydrate. Two, three, four, five. No, we upgrade plow ahead. Here. Rehydrate, go here. Make the free attack. Use poison shot for the five. There you go. Neat little puzzle there. What's next? Defeat all enemies in 12 turns or less for barrel roll. Show me. Looks fun. To win this challenge, defeat all the enemies. This is a different map than we played on before, too. Probably wanted to go with the other leader for this. That's okay. Vera has much lower basic attack power. Cactus has area attack. When he attacks, he attacks all adjacent foes. At least all orthogonally adjacent foes. Good for him. How's it going, Ranton lad? You're looking at Floppy Knights. Fully released as of today. So destroy is removed from the deck from the rest of the level. What is delete?
Plus upgrades to give an energy back? That's funny. What is delete versus... Remove from the battle when played. Or at the end of your turn. Okay, so delete also means ethereal. Got it. Interesting. There's a lot of slimes here. Not sure how to keep Vera safe. Oh, I forgot to use her free attack, too. Yeah, I could have done that at some point. Ow. Many of them. Five HP. We have a 12 turn limit for this, right? I think we'll be able to do that. How's it going, limit? Lillin? Ganged up on by those slimes next turn. Let's fall back a little bit. Not 
sure if that's a good idea. I get KO'd there. Text this turn won't be enough to do much. Healing power lets you kind of stay engaged in melee for a few turns with things. Should have used my free attack too. Wouldn't have made much of a difference, but would have made something. base movement, which is nice. Challenge, not much damage output for the team. Capture the target objective instead of defeating all enemies. That's what we did last time, so. I like the alternate version of the challenge here. Oh, different starting deployment, too. That spawner's right behind me. Reach the target goal and hold it for two turns. That's it. Have to use Captain Thistle on this one. All right, you got it. This reap plus. Looks like it's gonna be tough. We just want to run past most of them here with our extra movement. So I've certainly got a lot of it. I get through it on turn one. on turn one. That looks pretty good. Ha! Alright, well, that's a lot of mobility. How about we just uh, hang out here for a little bit? Find out if it works if I move off and then get back on. Oh, 
crap, you're still alive, actually. Uh-oh. Uh, I think this failed. Unless I just win by holding at the end of the turn. No, it resets. So I think I was actually correct. I just had win if I ended turn there, didn't I? Hmm, I did that wrong. Let's try that again. We did learn that it resets if you move off and back onto it. That was important knowledge, I think. Lose! But I should win instantly, assuming we get the same hand. If I just move on to the flag and just stay there for two turns, that's the actual solution, right? Oh, it's a different opening hand, though. I can't do that again. Okay. Well, crap. Sure, we can get the barrel cactus to put in some good work for us here. And we have Bamboomer Plus. There we go. Exactly three tiles away, though. This is currently on a forest tile, move three extra spaces. You have how much movement? Three, one, two, three, so you can kill me. Enforcements are real. Great. Want to keep 
hop one more time. Yeah, we should step over here actually. Didn't kick him. Gotta kick him. Uh oh. Barrel! I realized the slinger could get there. Oh good, we got a heal. More coming in shortly. Coming. Looks like the easiest way would be to maybe clear a path through them here. Get onto the control tile in one good move. Two swings takes this grunt out. Or I could try to kill the hava bopper. Doesn't feel worth it. Two energy to kill, and then I've got what? Three moves? One, two, three, four. Should be doable. I'm not sure I can hold the thingy for two turns. So we're gonna find out. I think this works. So I think simply ending the turn here wins, right? That's what we should have done last time, but I misunderstood. I misunderstood. Get in there, buddy. Distract him. So I do have to hold it. Okay. Which means they might not actually allow me to... This one could have killed our commander, but they didn't have a movement that uh, actually got them in range, so... Kind of cheesed it? I'll take it. I'll take it. Huzzah! They're fun little challenge levels. Anything substantial we can craft? Am I allowed to just buy infinite number? No, I can't buy more of the 40 gold cantrip. That's good. So the first try wouldn't have worked? I don't think so. I think we would have been defeated on the on that second turn. Can make more succulent kickers. Like seed sword, blight. Use it loses three max health to gain poison attacks. And it gains payback. 
Enemies receive one damage when attacking this unit. Hmm. Crop rotation. Move extra tile for each other unit. That's kind of cool, too. That's very cool. Buy crap, crap, crap rotation, crap rotation, and natural defense. Just have more options there. Is this game good? I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I haven't yet seen far enough into the game to feel like I can formulate a a real opinion on it. That's how I feel about it currently. regular map. Hello? Ha! So her lab has the challenge levels. Now we go to Cinder Cliff! The Lava Lands. Defend Bernard. Who's Bernard? Whoa! Look at all this lava! Cool! It actually appears to be quite hot. Is this Cinder Cliff? I'm guessing from the big volcano looming over town, we're in the right place. Whoa! Help! Are you okay? What's going on? Oh, I'm okay. Just a little tumble is all. <laughs> I think my foot is stuck under this boulder, though. What's your name? I'm Bernard. Take a deep breath, sir. Gulp some of that hot, hot air. And try to ignore all the monsters closing on your location. Wait, monsters? Don't worry, we'll come and get you. I'm gonna be ripped apart by an endless sea of monsters. Oh, I knew this day would come. I had a dream about this once. Just sit tight. We're coming as quickly as we can. Ready, Carlton? Affirmative. Affirmative. Defend Bernard from the monsters for eight turns. It's a lot of spicy cheese. Got what? Chucky. Troublemakers. And Quiver Kids. Oh, they got range attacks. I understand. Two damage per square of Lava Crossing. Let's try to use bridges. got two attack power, right? That's right. This is where the other commander would be a little bit more helpful, I think. you towards them too. That's interesting. I also did not expect the movement range on these things. I did not check their ability to move. I have to keep Bernard at maximum health. to have a big problems. Four range. Hmm. Awkward.
see if this works. Ah! My bonus objective. Oh, he had armor though, so he's fine. Well, that's good. That's wonderful, in fact. Let's deploy Barrel Cactus, but I don't think it's a good idea right now. Two movements? I understand. Let's see what that gets for us. Didn't think that through. Lose. I think Vera's probably a difficult commander for this battle, but let's give that another go. It's the skip button. Okay, starting with Bamboomer sounds a bit more viable here. The problem we have is Vera getting destroyed immediately. Right. guy this turn. Do two damage. Not a problem. Let's try that. That's the right move. Good. I like that I'm allowed to do that before I draw the hand of cards, actually. Seems a little bit wrong. Interesting that range units can only attack at exactly their range. For example, the range three um, bazooka guy has to be exactly three tiles, so these red tiles the attack range. Rather intriguing. There we go. 
This went much better this time. Easy. That's right, one free attack per turn, no free moves. All movement requires a card. Move to heal. Makes sense. Get in there, barrel buddy. They do get the free attack on the turn they spawn, that's correct. So you're able to, to summon and then attack. Units also create a card in your hand when summoned, usually. Enemies don't get to move on the turn they spawn. Destroy any card in hand to draw two cards. Interesting. I like it. I'm saved. Let's get that boulder off your foot. I would classify it as more of a rock, personally. It must be courageous to be considered boulder. It wasn't so bad, I guess. Look, I'm fine. My shoe's a little scuffed, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Bernard, what's the deal? Your stupid volcano just interfered with the gadget cup. My stupid volcano? What? So sorry, I don't even know what's going on. The volcano is known to act up from time to time, but lately it's gotten way worse. All these monsters usually keep to themselves, but the eruptions have been driving them wild. Fire has been raining down on our village almost daily. Yesterday, the fire department burned down. Baby, perhaps we could determine what has gone wrong and fix it. And then the gadget cup wouldn't need to be cancelled. Carlton, you're a genius. Oh, shucks. Only because you made me that way. Now hold on just two minutes. You aren't going to go up there, are you? I'm sure it's nothing we can't handle, buddy. We are, like, relatively strong, pal. I'm not your pal, guy. You'll get lost. You're unfamiliar with the terrain. You could be crushed by a huge flaming boulder or gobbled up by a terrible monster. That sounds exciting! Show us the way. Uh... Wait... Up... Show you? Up... Up there? Uh, especially now that you owe us a life debt. Oh... Oh... O okay... Heck yeah! Let's go, Bernard! Let's go. And that's right, the difference between destroy and delete, I believe delete means that it is destroyed at the end of the turn, if it's still in your hand. See, destroys usually on the summon cards. Where's the kicker? I don't like that you can't see the cards that you create. Oh, it does it does kind of give you a little preview. Move a unit for zero cost. And kick. I have to try the kicker out a bit more. I think there's some good use for it. it seems a little hesitant. I'm sure he'll be fine. Sure is warm up here, isn't it? My cooling fans are working overtime. Oh, Phoebe, look. More lava. This place is a nightmare. Oh, why did I move to a town at the base of a volcano? Why didn't I just move to the beach after college, where the only thing to worry about is the constant threat of tsunamis? 
If we solve this whole volcano problem, we are going to be heroes, Phoebe. Can't be heroes, Carlton. Heroes do things for free. <laughs> hmm, or perhaps heroes get to charge a premium. Yeah, I'd like to be the kind of hero who can afford a mention. Let's beat these beasts and finish this job before all my thermal paste melts. And before my glasses fuse to my face. Can't be heroes. What is that horrible moth thing? Big mad. Defeat Big Mad. Let's go over here. See those craters on the ground? Eruptions from the volcano appear to land there. We have a unit standing there where the eruptions hit. They'll take two damage. Let's stand on the craters. Behemoth. Oof. But why is it a moth? Get in there, Cactus Boy. You got it. Drawn to the flame. Like a moth. To flame. Okay, so only some of them get hits. That unit appears to be flying. Can move over any obstacles freely, even lava. Oh! You can bring up their movement range. And attack range. Well, heck, that's convenient. Gain plus one attack for each of missing hit points. Spooky. back and forth, which is pretty cool. Get our cactus up in there. I kind of like the description, Fire Emblem meets Deck Builder. A little bit. Onto the lava means awkwardness for sure. More moths. Turn a unit to your hand so I can this. Like that. Defeat the Quiver 
hits too, huh? I accept that. only got one attack power? Not sure why. Do too much damage to it this turn. Get back in here, barrel cactus. Do this. Please get destroyed. Plant. Move and then restore two health. That's definitely better than one of our basic move cards, so we should swap it out. No reason not to. Ah, uh, yeah. Please. Try uproot as well. Destroy a card in hand, then draw two. It's got some utility to it. Boiling point. Defeat all enemies or hold the target goal for two turns. With a bonus for winning in less than 12. The summit of the volcano is within reach. We're almost there. Stay calm, Bernard. Stay calm. I wonder if there are any long-term effects to this much lava exposure. What? Yeah, I read about this guy who got so sweaty, his eyeballs fell out. They did? And then he drank so much grape juice, his skin turned purple. Carlton, stop teasing him and stop reading those trashy websites. But they said it happened in my area code. This is the last stretch. We probably have to use that rope to climb the rest of the way. But it's being guarded by those baddies. I'll be back here if you need me. Please don't need me. Can do. To win this battle... Reach the target goal and hold it for two turns. You're right to recognize the artist from Dar Dicey Dungeons. Not the same developer, but yes, the same artist as Dicey Dungeons. Observe a button. It will extend the bridge. 
mathematically speaking, of course. Barrel boy. Shoot at me? Interesting. Hey, but it was as there will not be any more Spire today. Zero percent chance. It's only a little toasty. It's fine. Be bamboomer. Ooh. Okay, Boomer. Go down. 
Can only summon new minions. Oh, jeez. I didn't think about that. Always forget that those guys can move you when they hit you. Being pulled onto the lava, taking two extra damage. Not what I expected there. GG. Let's try that again. Unintended interactions. I have no idea if you're allowed to block spawns in this game. I should probably figure that out. To win this battle... Blah, blah, blah. Pretty good turn one. Can block spawns. Good to know. How's it going, Bl Balloon Brigade? Looks like a very delightful, if maybe a little bit short, tactics plus deck builder experience. Not something that uh, you could expect to be able to play for maybe hundreds of hours like Slay the Spire, but pretty good time. Again, I'm getting caught off guard by that. You guys are nasty, man. Oh, what happens at the start of the turn, too? Tough. Brutal. Have to move off. be happening again.
There's Barrel Cactus. Oh, I don't have that captured. Fair enough. Leave my commander there next turn, though, or she'll get arrowed. Thank you so much for the 20 months of support. Two metric years get. attack power. AOE health restore is kind of interesting. Not sure it's actually helpful for us. Anything new we can craft here? Yeah. Another Spitunia, another Poison Shot. Plus one attack power and poison damage. I like that one, actually. Adaptation. User gains two health, one attack, or one speed. Row seems potentially good too. Just free? I like that I can just make a card for free. No harm to do so, right? Yeah. Interesting. Please give me poison shot. Volcano Hugger, defeat the Lava Giant. Bonus objective, defeat five behemoths. Model says the card that up returns a unit to your hand upgrades to draw two. Wow. Whoa, that thing is huge. Is that a Lava Giant? I thought they were just myths. Looks like it's squeezing the volcano. It appears to be hugging it. That's probably what's causing the eruptions. Oh, how adorable. They must be in love. 
You think that's cute? Listen, lava giants are no joke. Once they latch onto a volcano, there's no way to convince them to leave. Maybe we could pry it off? I bet we could loosen its grip a bit. Do you think that might work? It might, but I've never heard of anyone being able to defeat a lava giant before. They're supposed to be indestructible. We'll see about that. What do you say, Carlton? I say, watch out, fingers. Here we come. Battle. Start? To win this battle, remove the lava giant's grip on the volcano. James, though. Alright, looks like a fairly competent group. Here's the Extendo Bridge. Deeply unclear what this button does. Which is under the checkpoint computer. Oh, this one, yeah. Doesn't actually require. Doesn't seem that important. Boomerang guys. Well, that's going to cost me a lot of health to do. I don't think that's worth it. It's only one, uh, two health that goes right there, actually. Hey there, Cyberstin. You're correctly recognizing the artist from Dicey Dungeons. Different devs, but same artist. Thank <laughs> you. 
we're gonna go way down. Moth to kill me. See that moth up there? Well, I did. I just didn't realize it was in uh, attack range. Really easy to lose your commander in in this game if you're not paying full attention there. Let's give that one more go. Don't need him. You can cross this way, actually. That's rather interesting. We learned that those can attack. Oh, those can attack this tile. Oh, that's what happens. Die though. Perfect. Good. Let's 
destroy that. Now, neither of these moths can reach me. I should be able to wipe them out next turn. teach him. Beware of falling rocks. Way to deal with this quiver kid. Spawners are a slight problem. to go basically anywhere you want. You can actually bazooka this guy from over here. That's perfect. Kill you first. Nerd. An actual infinite combo. This is monolith. Sounds uh, abusable. 
Very much so. those figures. <laughs> I like Vera's face when she takes damage. Also, ow. Do these have four damage? I do. Have some more health back. After all that, the Lava Giant seems like an awfully cool guy. Now, Big Man's on our side. Gain attack after losing health, cycle bull rush. He's a champ, I guess. Cool. Definitely have to give him a try. We did it! Whew, that was a tough one. I can't believe it, we're finally free of this endless torment. This eruption shouldn't be bothering you anymore. Phoebe, Carlton, thank you both. Now I won't have to move to the beach with all those terrible tsunamis. Aw, oh, it's just part of the job. Ah, Phoebe, you are blushing. She is not accustomed to being the hero, you know. Carlton, it's probably just severe heart stroke. I don't know how we could ever thank you. No need, we were happy to help. Besides, now we can get back to the Genshin Cup. Just let us know if there are any more lava giants pop up, okay? We can even give you a discount. Aw, oh, come here, you two. Oh, you should have warned us that you were a hugger, Bernard. Wow, we dispatched a huge monster, saved a whole village, and now we can go win that cash prize. All those monsters we fought gave me an idea of how we can get a leg up on Alex too. Oh, care to elaborate? Let's make a quick detour on our way back to the Gadget Cup so I can whip together a couple new floppy nights to use. You can't just leave yet. Wait till the hug is over. Okay, but just so you know, I have an hourly rate. Good grief. Good gravy. We've unlocked the monstrous deck. And the science fair. And new challenge levels, right? Defeat Big Mad in one turn. I want to try that. One turn, huh? Defeat Big Mad in one turn. Ah. Uh. 
So it'll take three hits to KO him. A crop rotation. Add kick and hop. I don't think we use the kicker itself. Yeah, zero cost attack, zero cost move. Definitely use plow ahead. So we gotta go one. So you have currently three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we destroy succulent kicker. Oh yeah. Wait, what? Excuse me? Do I only have one hit point? What happened there? What? Oh, the commander only has one health in this. Oh. Huh. Didn't notice that detail. Hmm. Hmm. of four speed. Interesting. Does it die to the lava? Yes. That counts. Cool. It's a fun little way to get there. Very neat. Well, so we've unlocked, I guess, the third of six chapters. And some more challenge levels to do. But I think that's all going to wait until the next time we return to Floppy Nights. I'm sure I'll be taking another look at this delightfully cute tactical deck builder slash turn-based tactics. But for now, I'm going to wind things down and get on out of here, dear Twitch chat. We are going to be back tomorrow, not later than noon Eastern Standard Time. Probably some more Spire on docket. We have a silent win to get after all. Have a good evening, Twitch Tarek, Wazzy, Sirius Shirk, Ion, D20 Rosh, Pedro Biagioni, BB Tech, Mirror the Mirror, Die Chopper, and everybody else. Hope you all enjoyed checking out Floppy Nights with me here. This game did release again today on Steam and Xbox, so feel free to grab it while it's fresh if you like what you saw. All right, everybody, until then, until next time, rather, toodaloo, farewell for now. 
Have a good one and all that. We'll be back soon enough with some more strategic action. Can't wait to see you all then. Bye-bye, folks. Have a good one. Stay cozy.